what can we tell about the speed or the rate of something looking at the graph? That's the question, right? Let's draw the x-axis, draw the y-axis. The position is changing over here. The time is going over here. That's why we call it a position time graph. Now I'm going to create a ball, uh, make, it, make it sleep there. Where is it? It's there. Next second, it's there. Next second, it's there. Next second, it's there. This is what we call rest, the position not changing. What kind of a, if you join the dots, what kind of a line are you getting? Flat. So when you played with it, you saw that a flat line just means the body is at rest. You, you can say something about the speed, right? Yeah, flat line means the speed is zero. Now let me ask you, the ball was born there, but instead of just sleeping there, it travels one meter every second. So what is it doing? After one second, it's there, which means on the position time graph, it's gonna have its picture over there, right? You can either imagine us dragging a sheet or you can imagine taking a picture and sticking it over there at one comma one. It's there. Now at two seconds, how far is it? It's two meters. At three seconds, it's three meters. Four seconds, four meters. Tuck, 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 you keep pasting those images. Join the dots, what do you get? You get a straight line that's sloping that way. Now I have the question for you. So if you look at this, you know that, okay, the body must be going upwards, right? That's why the graph is going like that. You already played with that. Now is the question, which is, what if instead of one meter every second, which is basically the speed, what if the speed now is two meters every second? What if the ball is moving two meters up every second? What would the graph look like? So what would it look like if it's two meters every second? It's there. A second later, it's two meters away instead of one. And another second later, it's two meters away, two more meters away. So it's four meters away from where it began. Then six, then eight, its position is jumping steps of two. Right? It's like if one of the balls is taking one step at a time, this one's taking two steps every second. So if you look at it, right? if you look at those pictures, can you see where it's going? If you connect the dots, you get a steeper line. Basically, the climb is higher, which is something you would have noticed when you played with it as well. So what are you seeing here, actually? The higher the speed, the steeper the position time graph is going to be. Make it lower and lower and lower. It's going to get less, less, less steep. We should have some word for it. And then finally, if the speed becomes zero, it's just going to be a flat line. But now, let me ask you this question. If I start not from the bottom, but somewhere over there, and now what I'm doing is every second, I'm climbing down two meters, right? Climbing down, climbing down, climbing down. What would the graph there look like? That's right, you start there, right? And then after a second, what have you done? You've climbed down two meters, so that's the picture. Climb down two meters, that's the picture. Climb down two meters, that's the picture. Connect the dots once again, you see. Ah, so if you ever see a thing that's going down, if something's going downhill, so the previous one, think of it as climbing uphill. Here, if you see something going downhill, you know the position is decreasing with time. So the speed is, the, the speed is like fine, but the velocity basically is negative because the position is changing downwards. Right? The, the ball is going downwards. Now stop. Think about this. Instead of two steps every second, what if I was doing three steps every second over here? In other words, three meters per second, but starting there and going down. What will the graph look like? Think about it. Will it be more closer towards this? Will it be more that way? As always, all you have to do is imagine dragging that uh, string or imagine taking pictures and pasting it. Right. So I'm going to do that. I start there and I'm going to jump. After one second, where am I? I'm three meters below, right? After another second, I'm three more meters below. Keep doing that. Once again, join the dots. What do you see? Steeper, but in the downward direction. What do I mean by steeper in the downward direction? If you roll a ball, in the case of two meters per second, it'll roll slower. Over here, it's going to roll faster, right? So what are you figuring out by yourself from all of this? Whether you're going up or you're going down, the more your speed, the more the steepness is going to become. If you're going upwards, the steepness is upwards, the uphill steepness becomes really high. If you're going downwards, in other words, if your velocity is negative, the downward steepness becomes more and more. So this steepness has a formal name, okay? You'll learn that mathematically later. It's called the slope of this graph. And the larger the steepness, larger the slope of this graph, right? And these kind of steepnesses are called positive slopes. And when it's downhill, you know, uphill is called positive slope of the graph and downhill is called negative slope. Now I want you to observe something super weird about all the graphs that we've drawn here. When you played with it, you would have seen all kinds of variations. 
right? It could have curved and all that. But every single graph we saw in this video till now has been a straight line. You know, body is at rest, straight line like this, flat. Moving upwards, positive change in position, still straight line that way, whether it's getting steeper or lesser. You know, make it go downwards, once again, straight line, all straight lines. Why do you think this is happening? Did you discuss it? That's right, it's the fact that the speed is not changing at all. From the moment we start the time, the ball or the ant or whoever is born, till they die or we stop the time, they're always at the same speed, right? If they are at rest, they're not even moving, their speed is zero, 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 that's it. If they're moving up, let's say at two, kilometer, two meters per second, then every second their position changes by two, 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 no matter how many times you count, it's just the same thing, right? That's why when you actually draw it, what's happening is that at every point, you're actually just increasing the position by the same amount. So the speed being the same is what's doing this. But is that how the real world works? I start my bike, right? And then to get to a high speed, what am I doing? When I start, my speed is zero, but then I'm accelerating, right? It's called the accelerator, I'm hitting it. And then my speed maybe in the beginning is like some really small amount, five kilometers per hour, then 10, then 20, then 30. So the speed increases. Or when I'm applying the brakes, what's happening? The speed decreases. What is the position time graph in these cases gonna look like? Let's think about it. Now to understand it, the best way to learn anything is with a question. Now imagine you're starting a bike and you're constantly accelerating and increasing in speed, okay? What is the graph gonna look like? Which of these? Now let's imagine that's the bike. It's starting at zero, speed. Its position is somewhere. In the first second, let's say it's, it has, it's at a speed of one meter per second. So what is it doing? It's covering only one meter, right? What would the point in the graph look like? One comma one, right? Yeah, but now let's go to two seconds. Now what has happened? Its speed has increased. That's why you're accelerating, now it's going faster. What does that mean though? What is speed really? The change in position for every unit of time. So the change, how much the position change will be actually more. So if that gap there was one meter, maybe now it's like two meters, the speed has doubled. So what would that look like? It'll be, that's right, the time will be two seconds, but the position will now be more, right? It already traveled one, now you're traveling two more on top of that, so three. Now, next second, let's imagine the speed increased even more, so the position changes even more. Next second, even more. Now just picture this. This is similar to when you were playing with that graph. If you had moved the ball faster and faster, you would have seen that you're getting, as you can see over here, right? If you connect the dots, a curve upwards. That's, so if you pick that, that's the right answer. A curving upward graph, a position time graph tells you not just that the body is you know, moving upwards, but it's also increasing in its speed. So it's not just telling you how the position is changing, it's also tell telling you how the speed is changing. Isn't that amazing? A lot of stories you can tell from just one graph. Now a question for you. What if instead of accelerating, you might even guess the question, what if I am applying the brake? So the speed is decreasing and the body is stopping. What would the graph, which of these would it look like? As you may have guessed, in the first second, the amount of position change will be a lot because you're really fast right now, right? You're covering maybe 10 meters or like five meters every second, and then you're covering the next second, you're covering only four, then three, then two, then one. So each of those as you plot, what do you see? Right, the amount of position change is becoming lower and lower and lower. If you connect the dots once again, you see a graph that's kind of curving towards the horizontal. This should make sense to you when you were playing as well. So when you see a graph that's curving this way, you can say that the speed is reducing. Now there are words for this, the upward sloping graph, we call that an accelerating position time graph. The body is accelerating, right? It's going upwards, but its speed is increasing. Here, it's going upwards, but the speed is decreasing. Now, you've had a fun time playing with these graphs, understanding that not just can you tell the position from position time graph, but also about the speed, whether it's going up or down, also, you can tell whether the speed itself is increasing or decreasing. What I want you to do when you have time later is try and think about the same thing when the body is going downwards. How would a body that's going downwards with increasing speeds graph look like and a body that's going downwards with decreasing speed look like? Think about it. Now, you can do that later, but for now, all the cases that you saw, right, where the lines are straight in the position time graph, whether it's flat, whether it's upwards, whether it's downwards, whatever it is, as long as it's straight, you know what's not changing? That's right. The speed is not changing, but the direction is also not changing. So you can actually say the velocity is not changing. So whenever that happens, we actually have a name for it. It's super important. You might wonder why, 
but it's super important we actually name it uniform motion. So what is this uniform motion thing? It's basically when your velocity is not changing, which means neither your speed, you're not speeding up or slowing down or changing your direction. I said neither and or, basically you get the point, right? Not, your speed is not changing, your direction is not changing, then we call it uniform motion. All the other cases that you saw, accelerating, speed is increasing, you know, applying the brake, decreasing, all these curved graphs that you see, they are non-uniform motion. What do we mean by that? Either the speed itself is changing or the direction has to be changing. Now I said uniform motion is really important and I used to hate it when my teachers told me something's important but never, like did not tell me why it was important. So I'm going to give you a small sneak peek. This special case called uniform motion where your velocity is not changing is important because Newton's first law states that if a body is left on its own, it will always do or be in uniform motion. A lot more about that in the next journey. But for now, you're ready to jump into the next stations, ask your own curious questions, play with challenging problems, and develop a really deep understanding of slope and speed from position time graphs.